In this video, we're going to learn how to properly use a chef's knife. First, let's start by reviewing the parts of the knife. We have our cutting edge, our spine, the tip, the bolster, and the handle. To properly use the knife, we first need to learn how to properly hold the knife. Many people's first uh, thought when using a chef's knife is, knives are sharp and scary and I want my hand as far away from the blade as possible. So they choke back on the knife and hold their hand down the handle as far as possible. This is not really effective. You can see when I go to make my cuts, my knife is very wobbly and I don't have a lot of control. So if we're going after control, people's next thought is, well, maybe I'll put my finger way up on the spine of the knife and that'll really help anchor it down onto the board. Um, this certainly gives you more control than choking down on the end of the knife, but it's not the way we have the most control. The way we have the most control is by holding the knife at the bolster. Um, so if you remember the bolster is this part of the knife right here. And you'll see our knife is weighted or balanced at the bolster. And this is where we want to hold our knife. And we really want to hold our knife with our thumb and our index finger in kind of a pinching motion. Okay. So just like this. Now you can see I can operate my knife using just this thumb and index finger, but it's kind of awkward to have these fingers sticking out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap these fingers around the handle of the knife. Okay. I'm not gripping the knife with these fingers, right? I'm just wrapping them around. All of the power is going to come down through my arm and into this index finger. And this is what's going to give me the most control. So now that we know how to hold the knife, we next need to know how to operate the knife. Okay. So when operating the knife, the tip of the knife is going to stay in constant contact with the board while our hand makes a circular motion. So you can see the circular motion here that my hand is making while the tip stays in contact with the board. One really interesting way to think about this, is to think about a train. So just like the piston of the train pushes forward and pulls back, making a circular motion, pushes forward and pulls back, making a circular motion to drive that train forward. So does the motion that we use for our chopping and slicing. Push forward and pull back, making a circular motion. All right, so now that we know how to hold and use the knife, the next question is, what do I do with my non-dominant hand? So we're going to be holding the knife in our dominant hand and using the knife, but we need to do something with our other hand. Uh, generally, that hand is going to be uh, holding the food product for our chopping and slicing motion, but we don't want to cut ourselves. okay? So we should always ask ourselves, if I slip right now, can I cut myself? And if the answer is yes, most of the time you're using that knife incorrectly. Uh, so to start, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, cut this piece of celery and we'll take this piece of celery and we'll cut it in half. What I'll do is I'll make a bridge with my fingers and pull the knife through. Now to use my chopping and slicing motion, generally we're going to use what's what I refer to as the claw. So instead of holding the food product with my fingers out, you see how easy it would be to cut myself like that one slip and it's very easy to cut myself. We're going to use the claw. So we're going to bring those fingers in so that the backs of my knuckles are exposed here. And the blade of my knife can stay in contact with my fingers while I make my chopping motion. So let's put it all to use. I'm going to hold the knife correctly by grasping the knife at the bolster. I'm going to use my circular motion with my tip staying in contact with the board. And I'm going to use the claw to hold the food and guide my knife as I make my chopping motion. Okay. And you can see how effective this is, how difficult it would be to cut myself, how easy it is to use this knife. And that's our chopping and slicing motion. 
we're going to do our mincing motion. And the mincing motion is a little bit different. Um, mincing is a much faster process. It's really gonna quickly break food down into really, really small pieces. So we're gonna see minces used a lot in things like garlic and herbs, where we want those really, really fine pieces to kind of disperse through things. Um, so I'm gonna just demo this on parsley today, um, but the same mincing motion applies, these principles apply to whatever it is you wanna mince, different herbs, garlic, whatever it may be. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I just wanna break my product down into slightly smaller pieces, okay? So I'll make a little bit bundle, a little bit of a bundle here with my claw, use my chopping motion just to break it down into smaller pieces. <clears throat> from here, I'm gonna transition from my uh, chopping slicing motion to my mincing motion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the tip of my knife anchored on the board, and I'm gonna use uh, my fingers here to help anchor that tip of the knife. Then instead of the circular motion of the chopping and slicing, I'm gonna do a straight up and down motion. And what this does is it allows me to work much quicker with my knife. You can see how fast I can really work through the herbs. So the other thing you'll notice as I'm doing my mincing motion is I'm running my knife through my pile of herbs And then occasionally, I'm collecting the herbs back into a pile. What's important here with my mince is that I'm gonna get all the pieces cut down to the same size. What I don't want is I don't want a big piece of herb and then a really tiny piece. I want it all to be about the same size. It doesn't matter that it's the same shape. This is, mince is not a precise cut. But what is important is that it's all about the same size. All right. So I have my nice minced herbs here and you can see those pieces are all nice uniform sizes. And that's our mincing motion. Let's review. Always ask myself the question, can I cut myself? And if the answer is yes, you're probably not using the knife correctly. Lastly, remember, all cuts should be approximately the same size. Depending on the cut we're doing, they may not be the same shape, but they should be the same size to ensure even cooking.